Ladies and gentlemen, were it not for Stephen Kalonzo Musyoka, Martha Karwa, Wajakoya the fifth, Eugene Wamalwa, and Mutu wa Sufuria, Jeremiah Kiyuni, Raila Amolo Dinga would have fallen right into William Ruto's trap. For those who follow the politics of this country, last Sunday, Raila Amolo Odinga, under a lot of pressure from the church and the international community, was called to a meeting. And he was actually prevailed upon to call off the demonstrations. His condition was that let William Ruto go out first and announce to the country that he's willing to engage the Azimio brigades on their issues. And that he was asking the Azimu brigades to call off the demonstrations. So that's exactly what William Ruto did. When it came the time of Raila Odinga, he was, as, he was supposed to address the nation, I think, by six there. That address delayed by close to one hour. And you could tell from the faces of the Azimu brigades that they were not very happy and that they were not pleased by the announcement they were making. Unknown to many Kenyans, the Azimio brigades were not willing to suspend the demonstrations because they knew so well that William Ruto had actually been cornered and they were going to give William Ruto an opportunity to, revent, to, to reinvent. By that time, for those who remember, Raila Odinga and Azimio brigades had actually managed to put William Ruto into a very tight corner. William Ruto had to sneak out of the country and he left the country in the hands of Riyadi Gashagwa. The truth of the matter is that Kenya Kwanza brigades believed that Azimio were not going to sustain the demonstrations because Kenyans are angry and angry without anything in their pockets. So they were surprised when Azimio began their Monday demonstrations and the turnout was so high. Then again, another Monday, and then now they added another Thursday. So the demonstrations were instead of one day, they were now going for two days. So they were surprised that Kenyans were actually calling for daily demonstrations. So they were shocked that Azimio were able to sustain the demonstrations. Kenya Kwanza were also put in a corner because they wanted to project an image of a working nation. And that's why they tried all the efforts to lock CBD from Azimio brigades. The truth of the matter is that Kenyans stayed at home. No business was taking place, especially in the capital city of Nairobi. Those who went to job or who wanted to go to job were asking themselves questions. It's okay, we can go be in the CBD, but how will we go back into our homes? So they were cornered. They were also cornered because they tried so hard to project these demonstrations as a Luo affair. In fact, initially, not as a Luo affair. They wanted to portray the demonstrations as Kisumu and Nairobi. And not only Nairobi, Nairobi specific places. They were surprised that the demonstrations were actually across the country. So they were cornered. Ruto had to leave. And when he left the country in the hands of Rigedi Gashagwa, Rigedi Gashagwa made more blunders. So they were in a very tight corner, dealing with almost every other thing. The international community were on them why they attacked the private home of a former president. The African Union were on them. Every other person, even those who were supporting them, even the Kikuyu nation, were angry with them why they were attacking Uhuru Kenyatta. Uhuru Kenyatta never spoke. Then from nowhere, Red Odinga goes into a meeting. William Ruto, having worked with the Raila Molo Dinga, knew Raila Dinga's weakness. Negotiations. So they negotiated a deal. William Ruto went, did this part. Raila Dinga came out, did this part. Then the reality now dawned on these people. William Ruto started scheming. Azimio also started understanding certain things. One of the things they started understanding is that William Ruto and his team were growing hot and cold as far as the negotiations are concerned. 
Because what was supposed to happen was that these guys were supposed to immediately form a team. The next day, and William Ruto being a cheeky guy, the next day, the first thing William Ruto did after making that announcement the previous day, the next day in the morning, what he did, he convened his parliamentary leadership meeting at Setos. And he shared the photos. So Kenyans believed that oh, Ruto was right. But then some, certain things started coming out. William Ruto unleashed his team to start discrediting this particular deal. Ishongwa came out. Aaron Cheruot came out. Rigadhi Gashagwa came out full blown. So they started discrediting this deal. And the question which everybody was asking, why would you discredit a deal which the president himself announced? I'm going to explain to you how Azimio saved Raila. They started discrediting the old deal that, oh, this thing is going to be a parliamentary. No nothing, no nothing. Then, Raila Dinga also made a mistake. The mistake Raila Dinga made was that when he was reading his statement, he failed to touch on the issue of cost of living. Cost of living was one of the main issues in this particular deal. So the next day when he decided to now issue additional demands, including the cost of living, by that time, William Ruto had unleashed his team, including the Secretary General of uh, NC, of, of uh, UDA, Cleophas Malala, to issue a statement that Raila Odinga is not interested in cost of living. Then, they started now accusing Raila Odinga or portraying Raila Odinga as someone who was shifting goalpost. That initially he wanted this, this, this. Now he's shifting the goalpost. Because Raila Odinga, I think, uh, added some other demands, the demands of, uh, of kind of negotiations outside parliament in the line of uh, the national accord. So they started, and it was actually selling. And the parliamentary initiative was what William Ruto had always maintained. So they started going out to discredit Raila Odinga, that Raila Odinga should just form a team. They meet in parliament. So Raila Odinga almost fell into William Ruto's trap. If he had not gone with the Kalonzo Musioka into the meeting again the next day, that is where these guys put their feet down. That one of the demands we must stick to is the issue of the service. It's the issue of cost of living. And that cost of living, we must put it in figures. Unga must come down to 70. That is basically what saved Raila Amolo Odinga. As we speak today, Azimio are still recovering. Because Kenya Kwanza managed to run away with, with, the, with the narrative. In fact, what has saved Raila Odinga and Azimio is the fact that William Ruto also made a mistake. William Ruto knew so well that the strength of these guys was on the demonstrations. Once they called off the demonstrations, then he was going to have the opportunity to recover, to re-strategize, and then risk him. Unknown for him, Raila Odinga supporters were annoyed when Raila Odinga called off the demonstrations. And they were just waiting for another opportunity to actually prove a point. So for me, if you ask me, <laughs> were it not for Wajakuya the fifth, Kalonzo Musioka, Raila Odinga would be a past tense today, not in, the time, in, the, in terms of life, but politically. William Ruto would have managed to finish him because as new supporters didn't want to hear anything other than Mandamano. And as usual, they believe that Raila Odinga made a mistake of going back to listen to Ruto. But the biggest question, based on my understanding, is Raila Odinga and Azimio keen on parliamentary initiative? Because if you look at the parliamentary initiative which Ruto is advocating for, Ruto controls parliament. But can William Ruto and his team also agree to an initiative outside parliament? Those are some of the issues. I don't know what your thoughts are, but probably maybe you have a different idea. Kindly let me know what your thoughts are. 
about this whole thing. I don't know what you think. That's my take. And by the way, by the way, a lot of you guys are failing to understand Babu Wino. You know, Babu Wino is targeting a specific group of Kenyans. Not you. He's targeting the youths like you. Not you who is not a youth. And those guys are buying what Babu Wino is telling them. I did a video about Babu Wino today and most people are like, oh, Babu Wino should reduce speed, blah, blah. That young man knows what he's doing. He has started on a good footing. So you just need to support him. And let us wait and see how things are going to unfold. William Root is supposed to be in a company. I uh, don't know what he's going to do there. And uh, we'll be waiting to see because Ukambani is also key for Raila Odinga. None of Ukambani governors were able to join the demonstrations. That is something which raises the questions. And I'll be able to see whether they'll attend William Ruto's events and their speeches. Of course, during the Machakos meeting, as we Machakos meeting, we saw people like uh, Wavinya and Deity. They were present there. And I don't know what their stance are as at now, but that's politics. Thank you, guys, and may you have a good day. Bye-bye.